Butterflies, they are a symbol of love and positivity. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm 25 years mm -hmm. old. I'm making this video to help people get to know me a bit easier. I'm borrowing someone else's voice to read this out, but trust me when I say that these are my words and I have approved every single word of this video to ensure they are exactly how I want to be represented. <sighs> I do have an amazing communication device and I'll touch on that in a bit, but I really wanted an easy way to express the real me to you to help avoid any confusion or misunderstandings. As you can see, I'm in a wheelchair and I'm nonverbal. This is because I was born with cerebral palsy, or CP for short, after my umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck during birth. Similar to a stroke, any lack of oxygen to the brain can affect the body and mind differently for everyone. After doing a lot of testing, I've learned that my physical body was affected a lot more than most people with CP, including damaged vocal cords and difficulty swallowing, which is why I cough a lot and need a tube feed to eat. But miraculously, my brain and my mind are fully functional and have developed perfectly fine as if it never happened, even if my siblings would like to tell you otherwise. <laughs> I am mentally my age, so I can think and act like any other 25-year-old. I tell this to you because it is so common for anyone who meets me to assume that my mind is the level of a young child. Let me repeat that. Almost anyone who meets me automatically assumes that I like sweet baby talk and childish treatment, and I have very few ways of stopping them or proving them wrong. Put yourself in my shoes, well, socks, I don't really like wearing shoes, for a minute and imagine how incredibly frustrating and uncomfortable that must be. My automatic response is to awkwardly laugh and do my best to avoid that person for the rest of my life, which really isn't possible in a lot of cases, especially because I don't control where my wheelchair goes unless the person pushing me is actually listening to me. So I'm stuck feeling trapped and misunderstood most of the time. I feel people baby me. I'm not a kid. I feel bad when people look at me in my wheelchair and treat me like a baby. I'm 25. I gotta be honest, after 25 years of feeling babied and treated differently, I am so sick of it. Like literally, it makes me sick. I have spent more time in a hospital than anyone ever should, yeah. with mysterious, insanely severe pains in my stomach, uncontrollable vomiting, mm. ew, infections, and extreme weight loss because I can't stop throwing up. But no doctor could ever figure out the cause of them. I have fought for my life a few times, spending months to a year in a hospital at a time. It wasn't until recently that we finally linked my anxiety and negative spiraling thoughts to the start of a stomach ache that quickly rages uncontrollably throughout my whole body. The moment I feel belittled even with a pet name like Sweetheart or Hun, or more extreme times when someone uses a baby voice, invades my personal space and gets touchy with me without my permission, I instantly get triggered into fear and thinking things like, I don't matter, nothing will change, no one will ever understand me, no one knows the real me, and honestly, it just goes downhill from there real fast. It also triggers me to feel overwhelmingly sad about missing my family, especially my mom, who had to move away from my dad's out-of-town job. They are my close inner circle of people who have always understood me and accepted me just the way I am. I have put in a lot of effort to find some tricks to help me fight these terrible thoughts and feelings, because I never want to set foot in a hospital again if I can help it. 
but I need to know that my support team is aware and on the same page because it's still a real slippery slope. I beg of you, for my own mental, emotional, and physical sake, please check yourself before you interact with me. I am a grown adult, and I simply cannot tolerate anyone ever treating me less. I literally fear for my life when they do. If we are just meeting, trust me, my guards are up to watch and listen closely to how you interact with your peers and other adults, and then when you turn to me. If your voice shifts in the slightest to be louder, sweeter, more in my face than anyone else, then I cannot trust you and I'll close up. My guard will not come down with you until I'm convinced that I can trust that you get it and will treat me with respect and dignity. Please don't try to force a friendship or give me special treatment when we first meet because I will assume it's because you see me as a baby needing saving. I honestly just want to feel equal to everyone else. So if you wouldn't talk or behave like that to a regular adult stranger or acquaintance, then please don't do it with me. Please remember that I am a human being trapped inside a body that has made my life really hard, especially without a verbal voice to easily speak up, unless you learn how to listen to me properly. That leads me to tell you how I communicate. When I was a kid, no one but my family seemed to know that there was a real person with a vibrant mind inside my body. So in school, I was put in a corner and ignored most of the day. I missed out on a lot of academic learning, so I had to learn to pay very close attention because it's not like I got the opportunity to ask questions. When I moved here to Powell River, there were a few shining stars who recognized my intelligence and thank God for them. We tried many different ways that I could control my body intentionally, and we agreed that if I stomp my foot like this, it's a way for me to physically answer yes. And if I shake my head like this, it's to answer no. Suddenly, people could ask me questions, and I could respond for the first time in my life. Talk about hope. I've learned a few different signs along the way, and I'm still creating new ones today as situations call for it. I say thank you a lot, like this, and I like to wave goodbye when I'm saying bye to friends. And we all need a way to say when something sucks or isn't right. So when I point my finger like this, it's equivalent to the middle finger. My newest sign is when I wave my hand over my head. This is to say, hello, I have a brain. Don't forget that I'm an adult or I don't like how I'm being spoken to or treated. Please pay very close attention to this one, especially if you see me doing it to someone else because they're probably unaware of all the things that I just told you. I give you full permission to please speak up on my behalf. All throughout high school, I got to try different forms of augmented communication. I actually took MinSpeak as my language course and studied to become fluent on the current communication device that I'm using, which is why I'm pretty fast at it. The device that I'm using is a touchscreen tablet that hooks up to a pole and attaches to the side of my chair. A blue button gets plugged into the device and set up mm. so that I can push it with my leg to activate the cursor on the screen to select each word that I'd like to say. The cursor starts by going down mm. each row until I hit the blue button again to continue along the line that I just chose. Then the cursor moves one by one until it lands on the icon that I want and I push the button again to activate it. Yes. There are many category options that open like folders to more categories or to the specific word that I'm looking for. I need to navigate through each folder to select every single word in order to create my sentence. I'll say, I love butterflies, to show you an, an example. The symbol of a caterpillar transforming into a beautiful new body has always been very special to me. I love.
butterfly. It even takes time to be grammatically correct. Mm. So now I'm adding plural to it. Butterflies. I love butterflies. Forming a sentence is a very lengthy process, so it requires a lot of patience from me and from you listening. But for once, I get the chance to truly speak my mind. If I'm speaking on my device, please do your best to let me finish before you assume you know where I'm going with the conversation or before you change the subject. I will often skip unimportant words like the, and, because, to try and keep your attention long enough to get out the main points of what I'm trying to say, and I'll let you fill in the blanks. I used to feel really embarrassed to use a communication device in public because I didn't want it to draw extra attention to me. Again, just trying to blend in and feel normal. But I've come to learn that it's an amazing tool to speak up for myself and to deepen relationships. As long as my care team is familiar with setting it up and taking it down, I'm willing to use my communication mm -hmm. device regularly. So please familiarize yourself with the steps of setting it up if you'll be supporting me. I'm happy to answer any of your questions if you ask me in a yes, no format if my device isn't hooked up. I hope this video helps you understand me a bit better so we can move on to the fun stuff. Once I can trust that you get it and will treat me like any other young adult, mm. then you can expect all sorts of jokes and pranks from me. Uh. I'm pretty fun and hilarious after all. Mm. Thanks oh. so much for listening. I literally can't even tell you how much it means to me to feel heard and understood. Don't shy away. Don't shy away. Shy away from a change your soul needs.